When I was young and too dumb to understand myself, I thought I had life pretty figured out. I was absolutely certain of a world I had no business knowing a damn thing about, and I lost a lot of time down that road. It's hard to understand when we're young, but time is always on our heels. It waits, as they say, for no one. Being present in our time is up to us every moment of our lives. Fortunately for me, it's fairly impossible to escape our history. Those instincts can be there for us, even in confusion, transcending time and the tendency to overthink ourselves. And the older I get, the more I appreciate how my parents' lives shaped mine. Our story starts in Mitchell, South Dakota. If you've somehow never heard of Mitchell and don't yet have images of the world's only corn palace bright against a powder blue sky, please allow me to indulge you. As a matter of fact, my mom's first job was at the Corn Palace as a tour guide, and my old man played basketball on the hardwood inside. He grew up the youngest of nine children, and as far as I can tell, half feral. Aside from playing basketball, he did like most other Mitchell kids did, and still do, I hope, fished and hunted. The man was fanatic about it. With few guardrails at home, he lived to be outside testing his mettle in the ancient chase. From the time he could hold his own fishing pole and gun, pheasant, ducks, and walleye were his game. After graduating high school, he enlisted in the army and eventually ended up in North Korea in the demilitarized zone right after the war. Crazy son of a bitch hunted birds there too. When he returned to this fertile land of corn and game birds, he picked up right where he left off and to his credit, married my mom. These two hayseeds eventually had five children, lost one as a baby, and then moved to Montana when the last baby, yours truly, was, well, a baby. Dad had always dreamed of living in Montana, and then there we were, smack dab in the center of the state. He bought a car dealership, managed it with pride, and then lost the business during the early 80s recession. We moved around Montana like gypsies, and after many transient years, landed back in South Dakota where I stayed until graduating high school. Dad bought me my first shotgun then, and we started hunting together. He got me out a lot in those days, but my selfish teenage ways slowly distanced us. I declined most 4 a.m. mornings to sit in a cold duck blind, and even casual pheasant hunts were too boring for me. After high school, I returned to Montana to go to college. The week after I graduated, we found out he had cancer. It took him fast, within days of the diagnosis. My siblings and I found out on the drive back to say goodbye. Our patriarch was gone, and suddenly, a fundamental sense of my identity seemed irretrievably lost. Although he's gone, there are still many ways I've been able to reconnect with Dad. Hunting has been the most profound and mysterious, though. And I guess that's what this is about. It's a way to honor him and what he gave me. It's also just an excuse to celebrate the two beautiful dogs you see before you, to follow their noses into the tall grass, to learn to follow our own noses, and to hopefully get lost a little along the way. The ache of wanting back time with my dad took its toll on me. After a lot of time lost in my own head, dealing with my grief in ways a therapist would probably not approve of, 
I decided to go duck hunting one random fall day about a year after he died. I set out with my grandpa's gun and little more than a clue. I got skunked, though not for a lack of shooting, but that experience, the quiet of the early morning river and the sight of mallards rising above the fog jogged my memory. I kept at it, killed some ducks, and found myself continually wanting to get back out. I was clumsily becoming a hunter again, but it felt as natural as anything I've ever done in my life. It also felt like the first step in finally dealing with my grief in a positive way. Life sped on. I married my wife, Jody, and in our late 20s, we moved to a small town and started our lives together. She insisted a dog was next. I was ambivalent, but after almost gouging out my eye trying to chase down a wounded pheasant, I came around to her good judgment. Enter Leroy, AKA the Bubs. We found him at the local animal shelter while walking another dog we were interested in. I looked back and saw this tall, handsome chocolate lab watching us all quiet and regal while the other dogs barked around him. We took him home that day. Within a week of adopting Leroy, I took him on his first hunt. He made a blind retrieve on a green winged teal that I will never forget. As I was looking for the bird, I called him over to where I thought it was. When I turned around, there he was with the duck in his mouth. That was the first time I learned to learn from my dog. Those early days learning to hunt together are something I will cherish for the rest of my days. To Leroy's chagrin, we found this little lady at the very same animal shelter five years later. Training her was the polar opposite of our hard-headed lab. Lucy came with her own issues, but I eventually earned her trust as she and my wife taught me how to be patient and gentle. I did not, however, need to teach her how to hunt. These two dogs have given me more than I could begin to explain, but hopefully the extravagant lives they live are somehow repayment enough for all their unconditional love and loyalty. I've been meaning to go back to South Dakota for so long now to reconnect with my dad and hunt some of his old haunts. Leroy is 12, and this is likely his last season. How much ice cream is too much ice cream for an old dog? How are we going to get him to blow out his candles? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. He needs one more bone. Come on. 12 years old. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I talked to an old friend of my dad, and his family still has a farm near Mitchell where dad used to hunt. They invited us out for the pheasant opener, and you can bet we're gonna be there. I cannot wait to see the wild look in Leroy's eyes and feathers flowing from his grizzled snout. Oh man, you guys. My dad used to hunt this very spot in the 60s. Bet it hasn't changed much. What do you think? Do you think there's some birds here? I know. Oh my god. It's the South Dakota opener. Come here, bud. Come here. Are we gonna find some birds here? Huh? Is this where grandpa hunted? Are we gonna get some birds here? Uh-huh. Good boy. 
Hello. Hi, Mom. Hi, David. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. We're hunting around the James River Valley. It's beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, no. Looks like the hunting has been good. It has been good. We got to hunt the farm that he used to hunt with Grandpa and Uncle Wayne. And... Oh, exactly. I know exactly where you were. Because really? Because Dad and I went in that area to hunt ducks. Really? Once. Yep. Um, we weren't married when Dad and I went there duck hunting. We were just so, we were engaged. So you, you went through that with him and still married him, huh? <laughs> Well, I grew up with hunters. I didn't know any better. <laughs> well, it's good to talk to you, Mom. I love you. I love you, too. Now, I'm not aware of any bird dog trainer worth their salt who would recommend introducing a pointing dog to hunt with a lab trained to flush. It definitely does not always go like clockwork. One of the most important things I've learned about bird hunting, though, is to never forget you're supposed to be having fun. Labs. <laughs> Whoa. Leroy. Hey, you guys. Come here. Heal up. Leroy. Hey. Leroy. Can you guys hunt with me? Lucy. Can we hunt together? Huh? Lucy. Guys, okay. teamwork. I mean, we're definitely not running any field trials. My method of training has basically been to take them hunting, but that is by far my favorite thing about it. Just letting them instinctively be bird dogs, learning together as we go. And we always have each other's backs. And what we lack in refinement, we make up for in persistence. Hunting as often as we can, making our mistakes, missing shots, lots of shots. But man, when it all clicks and comes together and we're working as a team, the rest of the world just falls away in moments of pure joy. I don't know how many hunts old Leroy has left in him, but I do know I will revel in every single one. Although it took me too long to find it, I'm forever grateful for the wildness Dad instilled in me. His spirit is always close to me in the field, and sometimes I swear I can hear his laugh when I miss a shot. I've also finally realized that home is just being at peace with yourself and knowing there is nowhere else you're supposed to be no one else you're supposed to be with. And if you ever stray, remember to keep your nose to the wind. Mm -hmm.